G'day, mate. Welcome to Factorio Fundamentals with me, Jetty. Today, I want to talk about something critically important, something you will never hear me call a mall. You might be, hear me call it a make almost everything or a make everything. But today, I want to talk to you about the workshop, the workshop and the warehouse, because I have built this by hand probably 30 times, 30 times in the last couple of years. It's something that I have heavily refined time and time again through playthrough and playthrough because this is something that is critically important to your base. This is something that you are going to need in every base. It's something that produces all the things that you're going to need to build a base. Everything from belts to assembly machines to chemical plants to refineries to train track to even nuclear parts and maybe even some artillery at the end. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you about my workshop and my warehouse district. So what we actually have here is pretty much the final version of the blueprint okay it's a seven stage blueprint i've actually been waiting for the blueprint uh, library upgrade so i can present this to you guys in its full refined version so uh let's start with explaining what comes in what this system what well, what the workshop does and does not do so first off we're bringing in lubricant copper green circuits red circuits two lanes of gears because you are going to go through a lot of gears this way if you remember from my earlier intermediates video i actually had gears being built separately on the main bus or separately and then fed into the main bus because your workshop is one of the big containers to use a lot of gears on top of that we've got iron we've got steel we've got stone and we've got brick obviously so first off we have our belt district okay we're making yellow belt to make red belt to make blue belt at the same time we are using a couple of tricks here so as you can see i have the inserters are linked to the boxes via wire so rather than capping the box itself we're actually having the inserter read the contents of the box and then if there's not enough material in this box this inserter will actually run so if i pull out half of these we see the inserter is going to start kicking in the assembly machine kicks in and we're going to keep filling up this box same goes for belts and uh splitters the splitters and the undergrounds are always capped to 100, so 100 yellows, 100 reds. A blues are technically uncapped. Um, that's one really thing I, I leave up to you guys individually because some people are going to use blue belt and they're just going to use all the blue belt. Other people are going to be a little bit more careful with it like I am, mainly because a blue underground costs uh, 257 iron, so it's not exactly cheap. Uh, hence, I don't use a lot of blue belt. I tend to just get to red belt and then I sort of move on and, 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 and do bots and trains and lots of other things. So, um, the other, the only thing that's really, really highly capped is yellow belt. Yellow cap belt's capped to 2000 because whether you like it or not, early game, you're going to use a lot of yellow belt. From there, some people continue upgrading. They upgrade everything to red. Other people use red a little bit more sparingly. So red is capped to 500. The other reason it's capped to probably a lower number in general is generally by the time you start getting red belt, you're not super rich. You don't have unlimited iron. In fact, it's Factorio. You're always short on iron. So you don't want to use a lot of your iron to make a whole bunch of red belt that you might not possibly need. So there's always a design to be some in the workshop. And that's really what the workshop's all about. It's not, nothing is built to ratio. It's all designed to work slowly in the background. So this is the belt district. Next up, we have Inserterville. So Inserterville gives us our yellow slow inserters, our longhand inserters, our fast inserters, our stack inserters. Finally, we have these Spelters, miners, uh, assemblers, guns, yeah, a little bit of everything. So this is sort of, this is your midsection of the uh, workshop. It's going to give you a little bit of everything. Uh, next off, we have the oil district. So, oh, uh, we've also got power thrown in with the assemblers and everything else. So we've also got our oil district. Oil district is going to be your chemical plants, your oil refineries, your pump jacks. We've also got robots thrown in here because it's just a perfect spot for it to fit wonderfully. We next off have rails. So we've got our train stations, our train track. I know we also make train track as part of purple science or our production science, but train track is one of those items you're going to need a lot of, and it's very, very easy to build purple sites to a close enough ratio that I have a second rail builder just in case you need it because you end up going through a lot of rail. We also have our signals made here. I do want to mention there are a couple of items that have these blue request chests. These are designed for once you have robots up and running that robots can bring things into your workshop to get it up and running. So this is one of those few things that is actually looking for uh, items to be brought in mainly because we make engines as part of science. So because it's part of science, then we want to be able to bring them in 
either through robots or through SneakyNet if you don't have robots up and running. So that's another item. We also have our our chests, aka our packing district with logistics chests. So we've got our standard chests along with the passive provider, the buffer chest, the logistics chest, and the requester chest. We've got a couple more train items thrown in here. We're also making beacons because beacons are great and everything's better with bacon. Uh, on top of that, there is the one type of combinator I tend to use being a decider combinator. combinator. It's one of those things I've thrown in because I tend to use them and I had a copper machine, copper cable machine right here ready to go. So I decided why not? Uh, finally, we have our nuclear and artillery builds. So this makes our two artillery, both being both the stationary and the artillery wagon, along with all the different nuclear parts. Finally, right here at the end, mainly because I didn't have anywhere else to put it, is our tanks along with our fluid tankers. So that is, that's really the final configuration for everything. But what I want to do is I want to step through the blueprint as you get access to it. So we have our very first version, our version one. Now, if I hold this up, because I have the technology unlocked, I can see all the recipes. But the main thing is when you're at the starter build, you're at really, really early technology, you can paste down this blueprint and only, have, only build the parts that you're going to require. So this is really designed when you've got red science complete, not even got green science started. So you can put down your belt construction because you've probably already got a uh, belt maker as part of your burner city or even your jump starter base, but you probably aren't making splitters or undergrounds automatically yet. So the idea is you can put in your workshop as a very, very early version. You can sort of space out where things are going to be and then build the parts you've got the recipes unlocked for. As you can see, it's going to be ghosting down some things that you're not going to have access to. So it's going to already ghost down the logistics chest, which is part of the, the warehousing district that we're going to get to later on when we get to chemical science. But it's going to give you an idea of where all the things are going to need to be placed. So you only really need to get the belt district up and running. You're going to need to get Insertaville up and running, and you're probably going to have to get the assembly machine section partially up and running, because you're going to need assembly machines, you're going to need miners, you're probably going to want guns, all depending on how many biters you've got to deal with, and probably pipes. But then the whole far end, you can just not build. You can just leave it there as ghosts, and that's really the idea with the starter version. Next up, we have our red and green science. So at the point we've unlocked all the red and green science, this is the stage we're up to. So we're up to our second blueprint. We've got red and green science unlocked. As you see, we've got yellow belt, red belt. We've got all our inserters, including our stack inserters, actually unlocked. We probably don't have red circuits at this stage, so we haven't fed in the red circuit line, but the idea is you can get red circuits up and running. Uh, sooner rather than later. On top of that, we've got our miners. We've now got assembly machine Mark 1 and Mark 2. As you can see, we are using the wires to make sure that we don't build too, too many assembly machine 1s or too many assembly machine 2s because these guys start using a, a, a large amount of steel. And then we've also been able to unlock the whole oil district. So the whole oil district's up and running. We can start producing our refineries, our chemical plants, our pipe, both normal pipe, and we've also got a dedicated machine making underground pipe. At the same time, we've also got the rail up and running, so we can start building some rail parts. And uh, our train, our trains, we can even automate our trains, and potentially our fluid wagons. So it all depends where you're up to with your red and green science and what, what you're aiming for next. But you should be able to build sort of a good portion of, of this, especially on the, the southern side, and get most of it up and running. Now... From there, we actually go to an upgrade planner. So we've used our first starter blueprint. We've popped that down. We've also put down our automation and logistics science. And then finally, we've put down our fast inserters and the upgrade box. So the idea with this is we can slide this over the whole build. And if we look at what it's going to upgrade, it's going to upgrade 152 slow inserters to fast inserters because at the point you've got red and green science up and running, there is a very good chance that you have more resources coming in. So therefore you can start having a lot more, you can start having fast inserters rather than slow inserters and really speeding up the production of your workshop. On top of that, it is upgrading all the steel chests that we've been putting down up until now. So where's a good example? Here we go, our, uh, all our inserters. So all our inserters up until now have been put in a steel chest, intentionally been put in a steel chest, whereas our belt have been put in iron chests. The idea is that we're gonna upgrade this to a passive provider chest, which means once we unlock bots, they can come and take things out of these chests and then deliver it either directly to us, or if we're blueprinting down large items, they can actually put this down. So it means once we get to our upgrade planner and we unlock robots, they can actually finish building most of your workshop for you. So that's the that's the idea behind the 
steel chest. The iron chest we're actually upgrading to what I like to refer to as a poor man's request chest. We're actually upgrading them to a... Actually, let's just do this. So we can mark that over there, as you can see, because we don't have robots, most of this doesn't work. But do I happen to have a storage chest on me? I do. So I can come in here and manually put this in here. And we've upgraded this to, as it, what I like to call a poor man's request chest. So what we're actually, what I'll automatically do when I put the fourth blueprint over the top, and we'll actually run down here to demonstrate, is we've upgraded this chest from a normal chest to a storage chest. The idea of a storage chest is a robot can come take items out of this chest. And also, when they're putting things back into storage, because this is going to filter on it, in theory, all the underground belt end up in this chest. They don't end up in any of these uh, storage chests we have out here. They should, in theory, end up in here. And the reason we want them in here is we want to be able to have any yellow undergrounds that we're no longer using as part of the base drop back into this chest to be then upgraded into red underground. Same goes with belts, uh, same goes with assembly machine mark one. So as you can see here, I have buried in here is another storage chest along with assembly machine mark twos because same story. We wanna make sure that they go back in the system. So when we unlock assembly machine mark threes, they could automatically be upgraded to assembly machine mark three. So because we've now got chemical science unlocked, we've also unlocked row reports. At the same time, we have unlocked those passive providers and uh, poor man's request chest, aka a storage chest. They've been unlocked as well. So there's a few more things that have been unlocked and up and running. Uh, oh, also we've unlocked the whole nuclear build because nuclear build is part of blue science. So we have, uh, we have reactors, we have heat exchangers, we have heat pipe, we have turbines, and we have the centrifuge up and running. Again, we are using some of these requested chests, which obviously won't be blueprinted in because we haven't unlocked that technology. But as you see, we're bringing in pipe to run to our turbines. We're bringing in concrete, yeah, concrete to run the centrifuge and also concrete to run the, the nuclear reactor because normally they're things you're going to make offsite. Um, in the case of pipes we actually have one dedicated pipe machine but it's shared about five different ways so it tends to be a little bit flooded hence it's got a little request chest here to sort of bump up the production of turbines as we get that far as for concrete it's generally something that's made off-site it's not something you're going to be making as part of your workshop so this is one of the reasons to put down as a request chest to bring in those extra items so i've got to interrupt past jd to just go over really quickly that with blue science also unlocks the warehousing district so part of robots really is central storage okay central storage is generally where we dump all our storage chests rather having them scattered all over the map and potentially having bots flying to far reaches of our base generally you're best off having your central storage obviously centrally located i in my case like to put it as part of the warehouse so this is why we have all these storage chests they've already been blueprinted right down from our very first build they were blueprinted down there and as you can see the idea of these is they sit here they become part of your central storage and also part of the rest of your warehousing district so without the way let's continue the story so down here we have purple science. Purple science is obviously our, our oh, production science is obviously our fifth blueprint. As we can see, the only two, well, the only three things that we unlock with production science when it comes to our workshop is we unlock blue belts. So we've gone from our yellow to our red to our blue. As you can see, we're, or we're still using the storage chests to uh, the poor man's request chest. Sorry, the poor man's requested chest to hopefully upgrade our yellow belts to our red belts to our blue belts. Uh, I will note that these chests are not capped. Okay, this is something I don't personally do because normally this is a universal blueprint that I decide to use on all sorts of different playthroughs. When I get to this sort of stage, that's when I decide how much I'd like to cap these chests, whether I'm going to have a base that is predominantly bots, at which point I don't need that much blue belt, or whether I have a base that's predominantly belt, at which point I'm going to need a whole pile of blue belt. So that's why these chests are not capped. I highly recommend you cap them along the way. So as the blueprint continues, the other thing we unlock is the assembly machine Mark III. Again, we're using the poor man's request chest to bring in our assembly machine Mark One into our Mark II into our Mark III. This is also getting speed modules directly from this machine into our assembly machine Mark 
3. Uh, the biggest thing with Assembly Machine Mark 3 is it's faster crafting speed at 1.25. On top of that, it is the first time it can actually take four module slots. I strongly recommend if you're having a shortage of these guys, you upgrade this machine because you need four speed modules to make one Assembly Machine Mark 3, and this can sometimes be a bottleneck. Uh, the other thing that we upgrade is right up here at the end, as you can see, it's still building away diligently, uh, the beacons. Beacons have an incredibly long craft time at 15 seconds. On top of that, you tend to use, if you're gonna go through and build with beacons and modules, you tend to use a lot of them. I will have an upcoming video covering beacons and modules in a lot greater depth, but as you can see, I have many, many storage chests for beacons. Main reason is that they stack in stacks of 10, which means each chest only represents 480 of them, potentially in one single chest. So I have five chests here with not quite two and a half thousand, but pretty clear, uh, pr pretty close to two and a half thousand in storage. Uh, all, uh, all up. Lastly, we have the upgrade for our poor man's uh, poor man's requester chest to a buffer chest. So as you can see, we already had six chests being six, eight, eight chests, eight chests, all built in the front half of the base. Uh, we can upgrade those instantly with the upgrade planner. And that's really something I do as soon as you put down the purple science blueprint, as soon as you put down the level two blueprint being uh, red and green science, you straight away put down the upgrade planner and upgrade these chests. And then as soon as you unlock the technology, which you will unlock with utility science, utility science is only gonna unlock a few more items for you. So it's gonna unlock the request chest, which I have referenced before. We are using them for train, Locomotives, we're also using them for fluid wagons. At the same time, we are also using the buffer chest to bring over concrete for both uh, the centrifuge along with the artillery, which we've just unlocked with utility and utility science and a little bit of military research, along with bringing over engines for the artillery wagon and also concrete for our nuclear reactor. The other thing we unlocked is the buffer chest, which I was covering earlier. Buffer chests work halfway halfway between a requested chest and a passive provider chest. The advantage with a buffer chest is when a robot puts something into a requested chest, it can't access it anymore. So once it goes into one of these blue chests, if I put 50 engines in there and then I want engines personally, the robots can't take stuff out of a requested chest. Once it's in there, it's gone. Out of a passive provider chest, they can access everything. And a buffer chest sort of works like both. So if we go over here and look at our buffer chests, these are actually configured to put items in, at the moment there's a request for 500 underground belts in this chest, at the same time that if I paste down a whole bunch of yellow undergrounds for argument's sake, the robots can actually access this chest and pull the, uh, pull the undergrounds back out of that chest should they need to. So it's sort of a universal, you know, in and out chest, they're, they're, they're very, very handy. There is uh, a couple of quirks. There's a couple of quirks with them, but again, we're gonna cover that much greater depth during our robot video. So we unlock really, as I said, utility science only really unlocks two things. It unlocks the last two chests being the buffer, the requester. It also unlocks your artillery. That's really it. That completes our workshop. And then we actually have a completed, this 100% complete, everything's been upgraded, everything's been tweaked. This is the final build. Uh, as I said, this, this little thing will service you throughout your whole base, okay? Your whole Factorio start, but game to end game. This will service 98% of all the things you build. We'll cover really, really quickly. It doesn't make lasers. A lot of people have lasers inside their workshop. I don't build lasers on simply on the count that generally lasers, lasers need a lot of components, okay? They need a lot of steel, they need a lot of batteries, and they need a lot of green circuits. Trying to feed them off a system like this means you're gonna drain most of those belts. Normally, I build a dedicated build if I need a lot of lasers, somewhere between making accumulators and solar panels and somewhere between yellow science, which also needs batteries. So that's generally where I, where I build that. On top of that, this doesn't build any power armor items, mainly because when you need power armor, you only need one or one, two, three, maybe five of each item. So I don't set up any sort of automated continuous factory to keep making power armor, power armor items. I set down a couple of temporary assemblers, I build them once, and then once that's it, that's it, they're done. I don't need to have five power armors sitting in a chest just in case. So with all that said, I'm actually gonna take you back up to the top and we're gonna build this from scratch going through each step of the blueprint. 
So as you can see, I've got our building zone here. And what we're going to do is with, well, first off, I have no technology. So I've actually removed all my technology from the game. And what we're going to do is we're going to start down with our first blueprint, our number one. So as you can see, we have yellow belts here. We have yellow inserters. I've got mining drills. I've got repair packs. I've got pipes. That's pretty much it. Now, I do have robots, obviously, to help me get this built for demonstration purposes only. But as you can see, we can get some of this built, but not an awful lot of it. Um, at the same time, I will actually have to, I'll do that between takes. I'll actually put down the robots manually so the robots can continue building this out. But as you can see, look, you can, right from the square one, you could build sort of this first section and then not bother building any further. But like I said, I'm going to go unlock some tech. So first thing we'll do is we'll throw down this robot port so the robots can keep building. But now that I've unlocked just my red technology. So we've only got red technology unlocked. We haven't even jumped into our logistic science pack. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste this. Well, first off, you can see there's a few more recipes have been unlocked. So we're going to paste this down really quickly and we'll see what else is unlocked. So we've obviously got our belts, our undergrounds and our, our splitters. We've also got all the, well, most of the inserters, long-handed and fast inserter. We've also got the assembly machines unlocked. And at the same time, we're going to hook up the belts that we'd likely have at this stage. So we'd likely have copper and green circuits, obviously gears, uh, iron, steel, stone and uh, brick. And with that done, this whole system can start kicking into gear so it can start producing those items as i said even though we don't actually have the technology unlocked for the wires because we're putting this down as a blueprint we actually automatically get that wire even though we haven't haven't unlocked the technology one of the small little perks about using blueprints so with that out of the way let's go and unlock more research so we're going to unlock uh, all of red and uh, red and green science so all the automation and logistic science to be able to put down the second blueprint so with that out of the way i've actually unlocked all our red and green science everything else from now on is either going to be chemical or military or a bit of both as we can see if we grab our second blueprint and we just sort of hold this in the same sort of area we see again more and more things have unlocked so what i actually need to do is i probably need to put down that robot port because we're about to unlock the oil district uh at the same time we're gonna have some more assembly machines and those sorts of things are unlocked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste down this blueprint. And as you can see straight away, the oil district kicks into action. We also have actually unlocked all the way up to here. So we've got trains, we've got the combinators, and we've also got the fluid wagons right at the end. So there are a lot of things that we've unlocked with just our, our number one and our number two blueprint. At the same time, we need to grab our upgrade planner and slide it over the whole build. Now we don't have this technology yet. We're gonna have it shortly, but we can still patch it in and there's going to be a couple of things that can upgrade straight away so obviously all the yellow inserters can upgrade to blue because we've had that technology for a while but obviously we can't start putting down the red chest being the passive providers or the yellow chest being the storage boxes until we actually have the next technology partially un well completely unlocked so the blue science up and running so we can do that and we can see the robots are going to fly off again and also start dumping down those at the same time in our technology little things that we've added from our own build is going to be assembly machine mark ii so they're actually being produced here and if this could ever see a green circuit because let's be honest they're being used by every single thing then uh we could start having some assembly machine mark ii's being built so with that out of the way that is a lot of the build up and running so next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to unlock a chemical science so being our our blue science so with that out, that said and done i'm going to go unlock some more tech so with that said and done we can already see that i can put down the very very next blueprint being blue science we're going to have a couple more things unlocked so we're going to be able to may be able to make both the yellow chest and the red chest we saw before at the same time actually we've actually been able to unlock and add two more things to our workshop we're going to be able to add red circuits we're also going to be able to add lubricant lubricant is only coming to these assemblers for now it's not actually going anywhere it's not actually doing anything but we can add it in anyway and we can add down our fourth blueprint whoop which I just misplaced, but that's all right. We've got an undo button now, which we can place down here, which should unlock uh, our um, passive provider chest along with our storage chest. So again, if I just run over to the bots really quickly and I allow them to start grabbing out uh, those and those, at the same time we will unlock robot ports. So we're slowly unlocking more and more of 
basically all the items that go into the workshop to make itself. So as we can see, we're now making robot uh, robo ports. At the same time, we're also going to, if red and green circuits ever made it any further than some of the early builds, like I said, this being put down very, very rapidly. So obviously these belts are not designed to keep up. But yes, if green circuits ever wanted down, the, down this way, we'd start be making our passive provider chests and also our storage chests, which means all the ones that we currently got blueprinted to go down would finally get finished off. So without the way, we've got blue sides up and running. Next thing I need to show you is unlocking production sites. So again, if we look at this blueprint, there are more things that are more recipes that we can't access at this stage. But with a quick jump through the research tree, I'll be able to show you adding those into the list. So as you can see now with the technology unlocked, I actually have production sites up and running. So we can now paste this in over everything else. And we can see we've started unlocking our blue belt. At the same time, we've also unlocked our uh, beacons. Where are beacons? Beacons are all the way up here. And we've also unlocked beacons. There's three researchers that come with beacons. Oh, uh, our assembly machine Mark II. So again, we just don't have any red and green circuits really coming. Oh, we've got a couple. So we can unlock our assembly machine Mark III. And at the same time, because we've already put down this thing, we can uh, put down our number five. We can straight away cover the whole build with uh, number six being our next upgrade. To upgrade ourselves to be able to give us a buffer chest. So again, if we bring up our seventh blueprint, we can hold it right here. And we can see there's still, what, one, two, three, four, four items that are completely locked out we can't access yet. So again, I'm going to jump into the tech tree. So with that done, as you can see, I can unlock the last two items which means we can then pop this blueprint over the top of everything else. Uh, well, helps if I remove that so we can see what we're up to. Pop this over the top of every, everything else, and this will start making our buffer chest eventually, whilst we have a supply of actual green circuits. Same time, we can start making artillery. Also, we can start putting down those blue requested chests that I did mark down earlier. So if we, again, come over here and we just release this and this, we can see that they're going to start going down straight away. And one of the very important things is after these buffer chests are gone down, you have to place the blueprint over the top for them to get the filters. So as we can see, these now have their filters set up. And if I happen to have any any excess belts in the network, they'd start being pulled out. Uh, actually, let's... You know, filters for 500... Uh, let's put some bots in the network and well there we go so we started pulling out of this part of the network to put into these buffer chests okay at the same time if i dump some red belt in there we'll see that hopefully a robot will robots are already marked to pick up 10 and they're going to empty them from here and put them into this buffer chest they really want the buffer chest to make sure that they've emptied anything out of storage first before they do anything else. But with that said, this is my workshop, my workshop and my warehouse district. Okay, you can always expand storage down. This is why I do leave myself a lot of space when I come off the bus because there are times when, what's this, 9, 18, 27, there's a couple of extra ones here. 27 storage chests are not nearly enough. There are some times when 100 or 200 are more, more likely required. So this is why I leave myself a certain amount, of, a good amount of space down here at the start of, uh, start of the workshop. But with all that said, that's where I'm gonna end the video. As always, if you wanna get an upgraded or a newer version of this blueprint, because I guarantee you it's gonna change, it's gonna improve over time, by all means, come jump on our Discord, links up in the top right hand corner. On our Discord, you'll find in the welcome channel our my latest copy of the blueprint. At the same time, if you learned something from this video, you'd like to see more videos like this, there is a playlist link down in the description where you can jump on and see all the tutorial videos I've done leading up to one, uh, Factorio 1.0. Lastly, if you're looking for more tips and tips, tips and tricks videos, but you can deal with slightly outdated graphics, there is a second playlist there that I have done in the past that is still full of very, very juicy, very important topics. But as I said, the graphics are a little bit out of date because they're done in slightly older versions of the factory. With all that said, that's where I'm going to leave this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye.